tonight is October the 7th, 2021. I've got something here that um, I am just super pleased to have gotten in today. It's, um, it's a current probe amplifier. I don't think it's ever even been opened. This thing is so brand new that it, it, it doesn't even have a scratch on it. Squeaky clean. The, um, there's a cable. This cable right here uh, came still wrapped in the original plastic bag. Never been opened. I'll show you here if I can find it. No. Yeah, here, right here. here. It came in this. Huh? I cut this piece off of it there. It says uh, manufacturer date 89... 39, so I guess 1989. So it's not even that old. Only uh, 32 years old. Probably one of the later models. So you might say, well, who cares about one of these things? Well, if you really are serious about measuring current and you want to see it on your oscilloscope, you need a you need a current probe. Now, what I happen to have is uh, three of these types of current probes. These is this is a model. Um, uh, 60P6021. I don't know if you can see all that. And they're, they're, they're marvelous. Absolutely marvelous. And what current allows you to do is to stay away from the high voltage so that you're not trying to stick a probe down there and measure the high voltage. Now, one thing you have to keep in mind is when you measure current with a probe like this on an oscilloscope, you're measuring peak to peak. So you have to convert that back to RMS if you just want to get regular average power. But uh, they come with these little terminators like this. But I've been having trouble with these things lately. 2 milliamps per millivolt and 10 milliamps per millivolt, depending on where you put the switch. This just goes in series with the, uh, the probe right here. And then this goes to the oscilloscope. But anyway, these things right here, maybe there's just something broken inside. I, maybe I need to take them apart and see if I can fix them. I've got a, a much older one here. This one right here that works uh, properly. This uh, this little turbinating port right here. Last time I said it tested good was 2017. But all of these probes uh, work just beautifully. You, you, you take them off of you. You don't use this terminator when you're using uh, this one. And this one amplifies it, so you could measure uh, very very low currents. And, I, and I'll show you how I do that. Just an absolutely marvelous device. It's got an interesting type of connector on the back. You screw this thing uh, down clockwise, and then when you plug a uh, when you plug your BNC into it, then you turn it you turn it counterclockwise. You turn it clockwise, and it and it locks onto it. Isn't that neat? Man, that is cool. I love it. Now this thing, I don't think it has ever ever been used. Never even probably been out of the box. Came in this beautiful box right here with all the accessories. I've taken them all out, of course. Power supply and all. Just a just a marvelous device. Oh boy, I love things like this. I, I know that uh, th these are a little uh, a little strange uh, types of instruments that I document sometimes. And uh, I had a lot of fun a few years ago doing that with the uh, general radio instruments. But these things are just so darn good that what you do is you use them, use instruments like this and those GR instruments to um, to verify the newfangled things, the newfangled digital things we get made foreign. See there? Cathode ray oscilloscope and associated instruments. Beaverton organ. Wow. That's still on it. Anyway, and here's the little power supply that comes with it. I don't know if I can show you that or not. Yeah, right there. So it takes a, you know, it's a little bit of a hookup. And uh, if you screw this thing straight onto your oscilloscope, then you get this be sticking out of it. So you got to be very careful around it, you know, that you don't run into it and 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 crash everything. But let me let, let me show you what it does. It's really uh, it's really wonderful, I think. Um, I, but before I go there, let me let me tell you what. Um, how I used one recently, and it was in one of my YouTube videos, some of you may have seen it, is I needed to measure the power, the voltage, and calculate the power 
out of a modulation transformer. So I, I had audio uh, frequencies at 2,000 volts. Now, you, you can't measure AC at a kilohertz with a meter like this. See, this meter, which I think are just fabulous, I love these guys, but you see it says DC and AC, and it says you can measure voltage up to 5,000 volts if you move it over to, you know, to here. Well, you can. I do it all the time because I'm always building things that's high voltage. But you cannot use a meter like this when you're measuring anything higher than about 60 hertz. For one thing, it's inaccurate. The second thing is, is it will arc those little wafer switches and just smoke the heck out of your meter. I don't think it was this one. I think it was a different one that the um, that the wafer switch in here arced. And I thought it was I thought it was over. Well, I got in there with a really bright light in my my magnifying glasses and everything, and I could see where it had arced across that wafer switch and I was able to scrape it off with some dental tools and it works again. But of course it's been damaged. Not that it's inaccurate now, but it's probably more vulnerable to being to arcing again. So don't measure audio voltages with meters like this. They work great at AC and DC. Uh, the other model measures 6,000 volts AC and DC. So you've got uh, You've got quite an instrument there uh, if, if, you, if you work with high voltage. Now, okay, what we're going to do here, I'm going to show you this. I hope that this is worth something to you, is uh, you, you don't use that little terminator that, that comes with it. You use this right here. This is what terminates it, so you, you hook your probe directly onto it. And then it's already plugged in and turned on, and then we're going to use the... Uh, Right here, we put that in there, and then we tighten it down, and we'll put this into the oscilloscope. And I want to show you just how marvelous this thing really is. When you need something like this, there isn't any substitute for it. When you actually want to measure the current, now generally we always just measure the voltage, and we may do some calculations from there if we know the impedance. But you know, if you could measure the voltage and the current, and you've got actually two highly accurate measured parameters you are you're batting a thousand I'm telling you okay so we will uh, just uh, well I don't know what it doesn't matter which one we plug it into let's plug it into this one right here okay and then we will uh, I'm gonna show you just how wonderfully accurate it is I'm going to take a, um, a signal, audio signal, 1 kilohertz out of this audio oscillator and put it into this, uh, this 600 ohm load right here. i got a couple of these guys. If you ever can get these things at a, at a good price, buy them. I mean, this thing is 600 ohms, like 600.0 something. It's, it's a standard. You know, when I was a kid, and I tried uh, building and measuring things. I couldn't get the right answers, and I didn't know exactly why. I sort of, sort of guessed at it that my equipment was junk. But you know, if you've got a meter that's tw plus or minus 20 percent, and you got resistors that are plus or minus 20 percent, if everything you've got is plus or minus 20 percent, you could be off as much as 40 percent, and then things just don't make sense. So, hope you understand what I mean. I just couldn't make things turn out the way that I thought they were supposed to back then. Oh my goodness, I just dropped this thing and what did I do to it? Oh no. Oh well, maybe. Oh damn. Well I guess it just this stuff is getting old. You know what it did? It just it did nothing but but break that little thing off right there. It didn't actually hurt it, but yeah, I mean, all these things were made back in the 60s or 70s, so they're 50 plus years old. You know, when I was a kid, I built things out of uh, parts that was 20 and 25 years old. I thought that was old. Well, now they're 75 years old, like me. And uh, I guess that's going to be me one of these days. I guess I'm just going to crack. Dog got it. Well, I can fix that. Okay, that didn't, that didn't actually hurt the working part of it. So what we're going to do now 
is I'm going to clamp it around uh, this wire. So we're going to measure the current through it. That's why I'm saying you, you, you don't actually have to put your fingers in there on the high voltage. So see, we're just measuring the current through it by clamping a meter to it. We're also going to measure the voltage across it so we know what we're doing. So we'll put a very accurate voltmeter across it. Now I've got a, I've got the cutest little uh, HP uh, AC meter here. Right? You gotta see it measures all the way down to uh, one millivolt full scale. Okay. So we got some voltage flowing through it, and we got some current and all that kind of stuff. And here's our voltage right here. Let's look at the voltage. I'll show you. The voltage is right there. We're going to zoom right in so you can see it very clearly. 2.2541. Whoops, let's get the cameras from not wandering off. Two point. Let's see where the calculator. 2.2542. Now here's here's something you got to keep in mind in case you're not familiar with this. You haven't done this before. 2.2 five four one enter that divide that by 600 so that's our load because uh, i equals e over r current equals uh, voltage over r 600 divide and uh, you see what we've got here let me zoom back out got to be able to see this uh, zero zero three seven six so that's three point seven six milliamps uh, look, Blair, can you see that three point three point seven six milliamps Okay, but that's RMS. We got to convert that to peak to peak, which is two times the square root of two, which is approximately 2.828 times that. So there it is right there. 01062, that's 10.62 milliamps, peak to peak. 10.6. So we're going to see if our instrument will measure 10.6 milliamps. Or 10.6 on the scale. Okay, 10.6. Now we've got it on the, the, the two volt range. I don't like for you to have to take my, my word for anything here. On the two volt range. Right there. Let's see, that's on two right there. And we're looking for 10.6. And if we look over here at our oscilloscope, 10.6. Sorry, my uh, I'm having some trouble with my, my camera here. Why is this darn thing so so loose? It needs to be tightened down. Sorry, I got to do this. Keep it steady. Yeah, 10.6. And it's two milliamps per division. Six, sit in there. 10.6, so it's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 point, and yeah, looks more like about 10.4 to me. But you, you see what I mean. It, it's there, and it, it's real. And by the way, I just love this little uh, HP meter I have right here. And you remember, this number right up here is actually very accurate. You can take that to the bank. Why is that thing zooming out on me? The 2.25. Uh, well, look at this little meter right here. 2.25. See, there's two. Each one is 0 0.1, 2.25. And it's on the 3-volt uh, scale. These things are so neat. They came originally with mercury batteries, and you do not have to use the mercury batteries. You can either use 9-volt batteries or 1.5-volt uh, AA, which is what I use it here. It does take three separate battery assemblies. It takes a positive and a negative of some, uh, I think they're of the same voltage. I don't remember what the voltages are. And then it takes a third one that's uh, different from the other two. I've done this with scintillators. 
that use like 67 volts and 45 volts and 9 volts and 1.5 volts to light the filaments of the tubes. This one it does not have vacuum tubes in it. But anyway, uh, this little uh, this little thing right here is just a jewel to have. And I got it with the original power supply, the whole shebang. Most of the ones I saw on eBay did not come with a power supply. And they have a few scratches here and there. But this one, I believe, is fresh out of uh, Beaverton, Oregon from uh, 1989. I don't think it's ever been turned on and used. And uh, you can calibrate it, of course. You do have to adjust the, uh, the compensation right there, the low frequency compensation, so that you got a nice square wave. And then there's gain controls. What a beautiful device for measuring current. You want to know what your current is sometimes. Most of the time we're just satisfied with uh, voltage. But sometimes that's just not enough. Uh, all this stuff is still documented right here. You can find all this stuff still um, out there on the internet. There you go right there. It goes to show you how it's plugged in. By the way, I've got a 535 in the house here that, uh, uh, that I use. I just I just turn it on and sit there a lot of times when I'm uh, having it on while I'm at the at the PC just because it's so beautiful. And the last thing I'll say tonight to keep this short is the um, the 810 amp fire is coming along. Let me show you what a pair of 810s look like in case uh, those of you that have never actually seen any. I have a couple of them over here. Here's what's going to be in the amplifier. A pair of these guys right here. Be running them at uh, 2,500 volts, more like maybe 2,600. They uh, are 10 volt, 5 amp filaments, 10 volt, 4 and a half amp, whatever they rate them at. So you need 10 volt, 10 amps to light them up. But these are 810s right there. You see an 810. And I got uh, I got over a dozen of them, and um, I'm looking forward to it. The way it's going to be built. Yes, I got the chassis in for it. Let me show you what's going to lay out. I told you I'd show you some of the building of it. I can't show you much tonight because I, I just can't deal with moving all this really heavy stuff around. But it's going to be yeah, a big steel cabinet, power supply separate, and one chassis is going to be here, and the other chassis is going to be here. Yeah, you can see that the the big output transformer sits right here. I do have another one right here. I'll show you what it looks like. You probably, if you watch my videos, you've seen it actually many times. Okay. There we go. See, let's see what's up there. Of course, turned over. And the two tubes are going to sit right here, like this, inside the chassis. And these, uh, this, this large and small chassis. They're going to be bolted together. They're going to be bolted together right here. Transformer here, the tubes. Uh, the, I'm going to build a bias supply on here. The filament transformer, the bias supply. And this is the front panel. It's 10 and a half inch by 19 inch. Again, the power supply is going to be separate. And for high voltage connections, I like to use these. Uh, these. Uh, Millen type connectors that most ham radio operators are probably familiar with. I don't like this. These things are expensive. <laughs> Ridiculously expensive, quite honestly. $40, $40 a piece. 80 bucks for that, can you believe it? But they're brand new. I saw some used ones. Uh, selling the other day three of them and I think they sold for about sixty or seventy dollars which uh, <coughs> I did bid on them but I didn't hang around long enough to snipe them at the end so that's what's going on right now I love to make measurements uh, you can calibrate with this thing right here I got this at an estate sale for I don't remember a few years ago for a couple of bucks or something right here but nobody knows what they are they don't want this kind of stuff anyway give you five milliamps of um, calibration current out of here. You clip that around there and uh, there you go. Maybe I don't have it perfectly compensated for that one. But that's what this looks like. 
does a good job. So that's that. So you can check the calibration of it. And I can't think of anything else at the moment, so uh, we'll just stop and should be able uh, to get really started on this amplifier in about uh, well, about 10 more days, I think. When my friend's coming down from Denver, and we'll see what we can build with it. We'll make the bias supply um, more Variac. I think he's got Variac, and I've got Variac. I don't need one quite this big. Just really a real small one, but you know, when you're dealing with transmitter tubes and we're dealing with... Um, Voltage is like 2,500 volts and above. You don't actually set the bias voltage to some particular value. You set the bias voltage for a particular value of resting plate current. Um, I think like there was a few other things that I was thinking about, but oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, not like this. This is this is the uh, the biggest part of the power supply. This is the way I build high voltage power supplies. I'm always open to suggestions. You guys have an enormous amount of wonderful suggestions, so I didn't want to show you this. I uh, put them all in series. I use high value resistors. These are 220K, 3 watt. Across here, this is a bridge. These are uh, uh, 20,000 volt PIV diodes at 2 amps. So this is plus, this is minus, and the AC goes in right there. I don't have the transformers all over here. I got a little bit of room for some transformers. I'm I will be mounting a bias transformer on it that senses the bias. It will not let the high voltage come up without bias. You have to learn this. You have to do this if you want to save your tubes. Because on a low mu triode, if you supply plate voltage, if you put 2,500 volts on a on a low gain triode without bias. Uh, things happen very fast at uh, at these high voltages, and you will smoke your tubes very quickly. I'm talking about within just seconds. You, you don't have time. It's not like a 6L6 or something. It takes uh, several seconds to start heating up in the plate turning red because you're running it somewhere between 450 and, say, 750 volts, which is 750 is getting kind of high, but um, you do have to sense the bias and make sure that you don't apply uh, plate voltage without it. And if you're running a multi-grid tube like a tetrode, then you have to do exactly the same thing for the screen because if you put screen voltage on without bias or you put screen voltage on without plate voltage, you will destroy the tube instantly. You will destroy it so fast you won't even know that it tried to work. So you always have to protect the screen you could protect it with a fuse if you want to, but it gets kind of expensive blowing fuses like a you know a hundred milliamp fuse or a fifty milliamp fuse, one thirty second of an amp fuse type things like that. I've used those and still do sometimes. But um, you gotta stay alive first. Don't get killed with a high voltage. And the second thing you gotta do is uh, don't burn up your tubes, because you'll never make it work if you burn up your tubes. So there you go. Hope this is worth something. Somebody comes along and needs a uh, current uh, amplifier for their oscilloscope. I uh, would probably find this one. It's a model, uh, it's called Tectronics Type 134. 134. Uh, very good. Thanks for watching. You all stay safe.